This is the GL.INET AXT 1800 Travel Router. It is a compact, high-performance router designed for on-the-go use. Featuring Wi-Fi 6, or IEEE's 802.11ax. This allows for fast wireless speeds and improved efficiency with multiple user MIMO. It operates on both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. Obviously, it is a Wi-Fi 6 router, so that is the case. It is capable of combined speeds of up to 1,800 megabits per second, with about 600 of that coming from the 2.4 gigahertz band and about 1,200 of that from the 5 gigahertz band. Again, this is optimal performance with those speeds and that is a testament to Wi-Fi 6. It is a very small and space efficient router. So that is what makes this so nice. I actually already have a flight book to go to South Florida. So what would be a travel router without actually traveling with the router? I'm gonna go put this in my bag and I'll see you on the other side in South Florida. Now for disclosure, GL.INET did send me this for free in order to review it. However, they did not pay me for this review and they didn't review this video Video before it was uploaded. The opinions expressed in this video are mine. Everything came back in perfect shape, unharmed, no scuffs at all. This was extremely nice to travel with because of its compact size. And the fact that this is a smooth, rounded design, it made carrying this around in my backpack very, very easy. I know a lot of consumer electronic devices that have sharp edges are uncomfortable to carry in bags. And this was definitely an exception based on its design. So 10 out of 10 for portability. This worked flawlessly on my trip here. To South Florida. I'm going to be replacing my current router and switching it out with this. But first, let's set it up. All you have to do to set this up is literally just plug in the USB-C to AC to DC adapter brick here. And what's nice is this runs on USB-C for power. So if you have just a USB-C cable laying around and you have a battery bank that can support 15 watts of power via USB-C, you can power this router on the go and you don't need this clunky brick. But for my use case, I'm going to be plugging this into the wall and making this my router here in my apartment. This router's underlying software is based on OpenWRT and they have this nice interface, as you can see here, this nice user interface on the admin portal. Now, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of options here. There's ethernet, repeater, tethering, cellular. You can actually connect a cellular modem to this router via USB, which is really cool. There's AdGuard, IPv6 settings, VPN settings, settings and tour settings. So this is an extremely versatile device. It's got a lot of features built in. So right now my repeater mode is disabled. I don't have any tethering going on and I don't have any cellular connected. I don't have an internet connection either because my WAN connection is unplugged. What's really cool is that you can change the ports on the side of the router. So typically with most routers, you can only use the WAN port for WAN connections and you can only use the LAN ports for LAN connections. With this router, you can actually change the WAN connector to be a LAN connector and you can actually change LAN connectors to become WAN connectors for having an auxiliary internet connection and it'll operate as a fallback in case your first or your priority WAN connection goes down. It'll automatically jump over to a secondary WAN connection, which is really cool. I don't have a secondary internet connection at the moment, so I can't really test that, but I will definitely uh, be playing around with these settings as time goes on. Now under wireless, as you can see, enable Wi-Fi is turned on. That's going to be turned on by default. That's the actual wireless radio part of the router. The transmit power is set to max. You have low, medium, high, and max, so it defaults to max. This is the default SSID that was given on my device and the default security as well, along with a Wi-Fi password. Everything here is grayed out, but if you click modify, it'll allow you to modify all of these settings. So you can change the name if you wanted to. You can change the type of encryption that you want to use. You can change your Wi-Fi password here. You can choose whether or not you want to show your SSID. So if you want to hide the name of your network, you can choose your Wi-Fi mode that you want to use. This is a great setting. You can allocate different bandwidths 
Uh, usually setting it to 80 is the best and auto is a great configuration. If you have a lot of networks around you, you may wanna change the channel that it's using. Uh, it should dynamically adapt based on the surroundings, but there's actually a great tool that I use for Mac that allows me to see what Wi-Fi channels are currently being used. And that is something that if you had software like that, you could definitely take advantage of and change the settings there. So I'm not gonna change anything right now, but that's for the five gigahertz Wi-Fi and the same kind of things apply here for the 2.4 gigahertz, but with the respective uh, different bandwidth allocations and channel settings as well. And as you can see, you can also set up a guest Wi-Fi both for the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz. So it looks like you can have a maximum of about four Wi-Fi networks off of this device. Now under clients, as you can see, I only have one client set up so far, but you can see its IP address. You can see its local IP address along with its MAC address and you can see the speed and the traffic that it is currently using. Now, obviously my device isn't connected to the internet yet. So obviously once my device starts sending packets on the LAN, it'll be able to uh, show data being sent back and forth here along with, there's also a block button. So you can choose to block a device if you want to. It doesn't allow you to block the device that's currently connected to the admin panel page here, as you can see, but in a much longer list of devices, it would allow you to block devices. You can also modify this device so you can go through and change around some of the settings. And you can also limit the speed that this device can use. So you can kind of prioritize certain devices that way. Under VPN, there is a very robust VPN service with this router. So one of the amazing things about this router is its support for OpenVPN and WireGuard, along with having your own VPN client and using services like Tailscale as well. And since I'm a Tailscale user, I'm definitely going to be using this router in order to hook it up with Tailscale. There's also some Onion routing settings here if you want to use Tor. And this is in beta. Now, going through here, there's additional applications that you can literally download and run on on this router, which is incredible. One of the things obviously that I said before is Tailscale. So I'm going to be enabling Tailscale to not only access a WAN, but a LAN connection here using this router. Now, previously I was using an Apple TV for that functionality. Now I'm gonna be using this router because it is so easy and it's baked in so seamlessly into the router and it makes it so that all of your devices can seamlessly use the benefit of your personal VPN with Tailscale. If you don't know what Telscale is, you can essentially create your own VPN using your IP address at your house. Let's say you have your house in New York and you're on vacation in Mexico and you want to access services in the United States using Telscale, you can use your IP address in New York or in the United States and browse the web as if you are literally browsing in New York when you're actually in Mexico, which is pretty cool. And there's a lot of very useful applications to use a service like that. And I have found using Telscale with my Plex server connected to my over the air TV antenna to be extremely useful with this as well. Additionally, there are some awesome network settings here. There's a uh, firewall settings, multi WAN settings, kind of like what I was talking about before. This is the failover interface. So it says the router supports connecting multiple network interfaces at the same time. You can set how to use it. Failover mode is when the link being used fails and the router will automatically switch to another interface. The load balance is when multiple interfaces at the same time are used to increase the total bandwidth. So not only will this device use both WANs as a failover, but you can also use it for load balancing, which is really cool and is typically something that you do not see in a consumer grade router at this price point. So that is really awesome to see. Continuing down, I can change the IP address. Now, don't be concerned that you can't change this part. You can change this. If I click advanced, as you can see, it allows me to change the entire thing. I'll be changing this to a 172 block. I'll be keeping the nut mask the same. 192, 168 is very generic. I'm probably going to change it, like I said, to a 172 to match my routing needs. And you can also change a guest network gateway for a guest network as well, which is really cool to see. DNS settings, I'm not gonna get into this too much, but 
if you have names of domains that you wanna have, you can go through and change some of these settings. Network mode allows you to configure the router in various settings. So if you wanna operate it as a router, which is the way that my device is currently set up, this is the default in which it will take any WAN connection from either another router, like is the case with me, or from your modem from your ISP, it'll then create your own private network. You can operate this though as an access point, as you can see here, in which it'll literally just work alongside your existing router to basically extend your local area network. IP addresses that are locally on a different router will continue to be the case on an access point. You can use this as an extender as well, which is really cool. I'm not a big fan of extenders because I've seen that they haven't really worked optimally uh, in a lot of scenarios. I feel like they're just wasting bandwidth. You can definitely go ahead and use this as an extender if you really wanted to. And it also supports WDS. It's also got IPv6 settings, which a lot of devices do use IPv6, a lot of devices don't. So if you want to enable IPv6, you have the functionality here. You can change the MAC address, which is really cool. So if you are connected to a network that has a pop-up screen or that only allows certain devices to work on a network, you can go ahead and change the MAC address to enable functionality of connecting to a device that would typically not be able to be connected. So let's say you have functionality to connect your phone on hotel Wi-Fi, you can clone the MAC address of your phone to have it show up here, which is really cool. You can also use a drop-in gateway mode in which all traffic from clients in the network are first processed by this router. Um, and you can use this mode to extend the functionality of your primary route. So this is cool functionality here. And this is also something that pertains to my YouTube channel, which is wireless multicast. So this router has IGMP snooping and this allows devices to subscribe to multicast IP packets and you can enable this or disable this. If you disable this, as you can see, it's not enabled by default. What will happen is all multicast traffic will essentially work as broadcast traffic on your local area network. If you enable this, you can allow devices to subscribe to a multicast stream, which is really useful for conserving bandwidth and not necessarily sending it across all of the ports on your router. If one device on one port wants it, but another device on another port doesn't want it, the router will make it so that only the devices wired that want the multicast traffic, it will send it to. Wireless, it's not really perfect because radio is broadcast to begin with, but it is definitely a really cool functionality to have and I'll be playing around with this and its multicast capabilities in a future video. Now under system, there's temperature. There's some really cool features here. There's uh, your CPU average load. Now it's got four cores here. This isn't your everyday router. This is a substantial router. So it's really cool to see, you know, temperature characteristics. You can change it as you can see here from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Damn, it's actually pretty warm, 124 degrees Fahrenheit. But <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll leave it as Fahrenheit because I'm in the US and I use Fahrenheit. RPMs are also listed here, as you can see. So when the fan kicks on, it'll actually tell you the RPMs of the fan, which is pretty cool. You can choose whether or not to enable the LED light. So as you can see, I can turn this on and off if I want to. So it just turned off on my device. And just like that, it's now on, which is pretty cool. Additionally, you can see some other info. So it's been up for 21 minutes. You can see the name and you can see the software version as well. And I love that this is open source software because the longevity of this device will be much greater than other ones that have proprietary closed source software. You can also see the amount of memory that your device has, as you can see here. It shows the amount of memory usage along with your flash consumption. And there's also an external storage option if you want to increase your storage options. This is your panel page for upgrading your software on the device. There's a local upgrade where you can drag and drop your file to upgrade the software. And then there's also an over the air update using the internet setting here. Uh, there's additional settings here under scheduled tasks. You have LED display schedule, schedule reboot, and five gigahertz Wi-Fi status schedule. So if you wanna turn on and off Wi-Fi during the day, maybe you have a pesky neighbor that connects to your Wi-Fi and you wanna shut them off during the day, uh, you could go ahead and do that here as well. Maybe you have a kid that you know only uses a five gigahertz or two gigahertz and you wanna turn it off during the day, maybe when they get home so that they should be studying instead of uh, browsing TikTok. 
TikTok, you could do that as well. There's an admin panel here, so you can change some admin settings. Time zone settings, as you can see, time zone settings have not come up yet because it is not connected to the internet. As soon as you connect this to the internet, it'll sync up with the internet time. You can also change the toggle settings on the side of the physical device and you can change around with these here. This is the log. We've got a system log, kernel log, crash log, cloud log, and Nginx log as well. There's also firmware reset settings and some additional advanced settings. Wow, so that is a breakdown of this router. As you can see here, let's connect it to the internet. All right, it's been blinking this entire time. It's been wanting that wide area network internet connection. Now you can still operate routers without an internet connection, but obviously if you wanna be connected to the internet, you're gonna to want to connect this device to the internet. So it's nice that they include this ethernet cable here, as you can see, let's connect this to the internet. So as you can see here, I just connected it to the WAN port, but like I said before, you can actually change these ports around. So if you wanted to have an additional WAN connection, you can use these ports as WAN connections as well, these LAN ports here. And also, if you just wanted to use this router as this super beast local area network machine, you can turn off that WAN port to become a LAN connection. And that also works in a setting where you're tethering to another wireless network as well. I have Wi-Fi turned off and I have an Ethernet cable connected to my Mac via a Ethernet to USB-C adapter, as you can see here. Let's run a speed test and see how well the router is able to handle the speeds here. Let's see. One millisecond ping, as you can see. We're getting, yep, that's about what we should be getting. We're getting both almost a gigabit down and a gigabit up. Uh, I have fiber here in my apartment, but as you can see, speeds are extremely good. Ping was one millisecond, jitter one millisecond, 0% loss. I mean, this is a testament to fiber, but router's able to handle it. The WAN port is a one gigabit port, so it can handle this perfectly fine. The LAN ports are one gigabit, and obviously, as you can see here, no problems at all getting those speeds. I've unplugged the ethernet adapter. I'm going to go up and turn on Wi-Fi. We'll see how good these Wi-Fi six speeds are on this router. three milliseconds. So it about have the speed, but this isn't a router issue. This is just the nature of Wi-Fi 6 and the fact that this channel has a lot of interference on it. I'm in a, a crowded apartment with lots of routers everywhere. And this is exactly what you'd expect. Ping was extremely good, jitter only 20 milliseconds. So phenomenal speeds here across the board. Definitely uh, love that upload internet connection for YouTube. All right, I wanted to do a follow-up because I've been using this router now for about two to three weeks and really getting a good feel for how it's working. And it has been amazing. I've never had any dropouts. It's been extremely stable, which has been really nice. And I think if you are into routers or if you're following this channel and you're into over-the-air TV or other over-the-air technologies, this will really supplement your over-the-air lifestyle with a Plex server and Talscale. If you have a Plex server connected with an over-the-air antenna, you can easily stream your over-the-air TV away from home without exposing any public ports with Talscale. And this router does that seamlessly. This router is very action-packed, but one thing that I don't like as much is the fact that this is only Wi-Fi 6 and that it doesn't support Wi-Fi 6E. I know Wi-Fi 7 is also a thing. It would be nice if this router had upgraded wireless technologies, but other than that, I think it is still a very good router for the price. I'm glad that GL.inet was able to send me this to review because I think it's an awesome device. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. If you like this video, consider subscribing and liking the video. Follow Western New York Over the Air on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at WNY Over the Air. Like Western New York Over the Air on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. Support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. And check out WNYOverTheAir.com for live band scans, cord cutting tips, and much more.